Ever since the fall of Eastern Airlines and Panam in 1991, mergers and buyouts between rival legacy airlines and low-cost airlines in America have been in the spotlight on a constant basis. This trend started when Panam was purchased by Delta following a lack of income and revenue. Following the value jet flight crash, the airline was merged with their parent company, Airtran Holdings, to form Airtran Airways in July of 1997. Shortly after that, TWA was merged with American Airlines on December 1, 2001, following a fourth and final bankruptcy declaration. Following the TWA and American Airlines merger, there was a reverse merger with America West and US Airways in September 2005, following the bankruptcy of America West. Following this trend was Delta, announcing on October 26, 2008, that they will be merging with Northwest Airlines. Furthermore, in May of 2010, United Airlines had announced that they would be merging with Continental Airlines. Then in 2013, American Airlines and US Airways announced that they would be merging, which ended up creating the largest airline in the world based on fleet size. After that, Southwest had merged with Airtran following the final Airtran flight, being Airtran Flight 1, from Atlanta on December 28, 2014. Sadly, this flight was overshadowed by the Air Asia crash which happened on the same day. And capping off on an already long list of mergers, Alaska had announced in 2017 that they would merge with Virgin America, which was recently completed in January 2018. Now for those who are unfamiliar with aviation, airlines in the mid-1980s and the 1990s had been hit very hard following the era of corporate raiders and soaring fuel prices, which had put Eastern Airlines out of business. Corporate raiders and union busters like Frank Lorenzo and Carl Icahn had left beloved airlines like Eastern Airlines, Continental Airlines and TWA in turmoil by the early 1980s, predating their fate by about 10 to 30 years. The legacy airlines in the 2000s would once again be hit hard following the 9-11 tax and soaring fuel prices once again, with United Airlines even filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in October 2005, although they had recovered in 2006. Right around the point of 9-11, many airlines in America lost a lot of money as demand for air travel nosedived and quality amongst the legacy carriers had begun to decline along with it. Shortly after the TWA and American Airlines merger, many of the TWA employees had not been given seniority by American Airlines, and they couldn't keep their original TWA union contracts, with many if not all TWA employees being sacked by American Airlines by July 2003. Frequent flyers of TWA along with the former TWA employees often saw American Airlines as greedy and bloodthirsty bullies with a vengeance for their competitors. Well, there's nothing new there again. Continuing the trend in the early 2010s, United Airlines had begun to decline in quality and was soon faced with numerous PR and customer service disasters that inevitably got them in headline news on more occasions than once, such as the incident where they dragged a man off the plane in April 2017 when the flight was overbooked and refused to give up his seat. Frequent flyers on United and Continental had both noticed a steep decline in quality of their airline. So in late 2013, following the US Airways merger, things that American Airlines had begun to deteriorate between American Airlines and the US Airways employees, with US Airways pilots threatening a lawsuit against American Airlines over their seniority ranking being discarded by the airline's notorious pilots' union. Not helping this rough patch is the fact that at the time of the merger, US Airways had the lowest customer satisfaction rating of all American legacy carriers. Delta appears to have fared by far the best following their merger with Northwest Airlines, with the airline making drastic efforts to improve their overall in-flight product, following a very rough set of years with a decline in their quality in the late 1990s and throughout the 2000s. Delta is often seen by frequent flies in America today as being easily the best of the three US legacy carriers, though some say customer service at the airline is left to be desired. Now after all of the mergers, Americans who know the industry well have high expectations for the airlines and have become more and more skeptical about the quality of the airlines as the airlines they love flying are now gone and they're forced to settle with only the major free airlines that are operating today. So is there any hope for improvement among the airlines in America? Well, to be honest, it doesn't look promising for the legacy carriers. Much of the smaller competition has already been merged with the bigger airlines 
and said bigger airlines have mostly merged together with their own rivals, meaning that the legacy carriers could more likely let the quality decline and focus more on personal profits and pleasing their shareholders, like Ben on my Discord server has seen when flying on Observing United in August 2017 for example. However, low-cost carriers like Southwest, JetBlue and Alaska have not fallen victim to the increasing trend in American business of pleasing Wall Street by compromising on quality and business practices. These three low-cost airlines are often viewed by travelers in America to be better than the legacy carriers despite having far less destinations and less amenities, and they also offer a more personal and a more pleasant experience. Those people who have worked for the pioneering and high-quality airlines such as TWA, Eastern, Continental and Pan Am will frequently say in the comments of YouTube videos and blog posts that the sun has set on the days of airlines providing the best possible service, and the air travel today has become nothing like what it used to be. Ben on my Discord server believes that the only hope for American legacy carriers improving their customer service would be to take lessons from major LCCs in America as well as Asian airlines such as Asiana Airlines, ANA, Japan Airlines, Singapore Airlines and Garuda Indonesia, of all whom are affiliated with the US legacy carriers in the One World, Sky Team and also Star Alliance Airline Alliances. So there you go my friends, that was a very interesting video regarding mergers and airlines in the US. If you have any further opinions or comments to add, then by all means do share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys and a big thank you for Ben for getting me this information. Like and subscribe as always and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace. Everybody, come in and sit down. But this evening bell down. Well, we can't leave town. Really bad to the bone. B -b bad to the bone. Well, old folks, now that I have your attention, let me introduce myself. Captain Mav Dog Watson here from the flight deck along with the